on my Facebook. Live. Go to on your Facebook. Oh, line. this meeting is live streamed. It's Tuesday night. I'm Wild Joe. This is Dive Bar Comedy. We have a fun group of comics yet again every week. So uh, thank you, Carol Newell, for getting us of course. up and going and live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's start this off with our theme song by the late and great GT. And then we'll go around and meet all of our comics tonight. Here we go. Here we go. Walking into Chino. <laughs> I wanna do some comedy. I wanna do some comedy. At a dive bar, at a dive bar, at a dive bar, at a dive bar. I can't say what I wanna say. I can't say what I wanna say. I'm censored. Dive bar comedy. Hello. Man, man, I miss GT going into these uh, bars again that he set up in the first place. So we'll be at Liquid Zoo the last Tuesday of every month. That's a location that GT scouted and almost at least half the comics are GT's comics that he found out and about hitting the open mic scene five nights a week. So uh, I definitely think about him every time I go into one of these dirty dive bars and uh <laughs> we're, gonna be, we're gonna be lugging our gear getting microphones set up doing sound checks uh all that stuff yet again i'm making banners we're hanging outside the uh liquid zoo so we'll have a nice big three foot by six foot banner on sepulveda in the valley so anybody driving by or stopping for gas at chevron will see us so that's going to be pretty cool all right, mm -hmm. um, let's do some announcements. So I announced our shows the last Thursday of the month is Liquid Zoo. The first, I'm sorry, Tuesday, Tuesday, we're sticking to Tuesdays. Last Tuesday of the month, Liquid Zoo. And first Tuesday of the month is at Witch's Brew. Both places are out in the valley. All right, Carol, mm -hmm. how, how are your uh, shows going? <laughs> Well, uh, actually, on Thursday, I will be at the Comedy Chateau in a show, you guys. So come out for that. Come support. Com uh, comedians get in free at the Comedy Chateau. Just tell them at the door that you're a comedian and they're supposed to let you in free. So that's how really? that goes. Of course, still two drink minimum. But uh, yeah, that's Felix's policy, evidently. So uh, it worked for me last week. I got in for free. So and then, uh, of course, on Saturday, pandemic at the NoHo Diner parking lot, we're going to be showing a drive-in movie over your car stereo, real drive-in movie with a real drive-in sound uh, and free popcorn and free ca candy, you guys. So um, Saturday night, uh, open mic, 7 to 9, and then the movie is 9.30 to 11. It is a documentary, and everybody in the L.A. comedy that was doing comedy last summer is pretty much in it. I'm in it. Uh, a bunch of people that have been on the show, Dave Carter, Wendy Wilkins, Stephen Briggs, Brandon Bricks, uh, Franklin Yee, uh, Amir Khalil, just a ton of L.A. comedians, Nick Bradfield, uh, James Demon, uh, he's a producer in that. So uh, come out Saturday night for the movie and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Wow, that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to a, I've never, I don't think I've ever been to a drive-in. So 
Where is it again? Cool retro uh, it's experience. in North Hollywood on Magnolia at the North Hollywood Diner. Magnolia uh, and Tahunga. Oh, oh, nice. Wow. Oh, that yeah. North Hollywood Diner. I worked there yeah. one day. One oh, day. Wow. <laughs> one whole day. Yep, that's where we'll be. That's fire the parking lot. The fires. So it's a, move, it's a movie about the comics during the mm -hmm. pandemic. Mm -hmm. And Carol is in it. So I am. Come see it. Mm -hmm. That's wow. cool. I got an IMDB credit and everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Very um, exciting. I have my surgery tomorrow and uh, I was worried because my doctor said I might need a blood transfusion because I'm a little bit anemic going into surgery. And then I saw Kenny Lyon. You remember? Kenny Lyon, he's been on the show talking he's about in, his transgender experience and his syphilis. And last year he was talking about gonorrhea. Anyway, uh, he was Versus on time. Facebook today talking Great about how, his, um, how he's a blood donor. And uh, he fell asleep during his blood donation. And I guess they disqualified him hmm. today. But he normally makes $500 a month donating blood. And wow. so now I'm very, very afraid of any blood products. If those are the people that are donating <laughs> blood, I'm like, oh no, I hope I don't need a blood transfusion. So everybody, you know, just pray whether you believe in it or not. Kenny Lyon is up with some too, by the way. Bums blood no offense to kenny lyon yes carol i said kenny lyon is in the movie too as well as eric escobar uh, okay. i mean just everybody in it i could just it seemed like the kind of thing he would be in that's why mm -hmm. he came to my mind but mm -hmm. anyway and you never know on your instagram gonorrhea blood but you're I mean, not gonna, I'm, you're sure, not gonna I'm sure he's cured anything. now but he he's very open about it he puts it all over facebook and all over his uh stand-up it's very open about all his diseases, but I'm like, yes. Anyway, all right, you guys, let's meet our comics. Okay, we've got Bella Rose. Bella Rose in the house. You were at the Comedy Chateau with us just a few days ago. What'd you think of the place? Oh, it was super nice. It's a nice place. I liked it. Yeah. Can so you hear Bella, me? you're a little um, breaking up, like maybe your internet's not perfect, but um, I, we can hear you. How's it going? Oh, you can. What have you been up to? Um, you know, not a lot. Just like I'm growing my own food. I'm starting a podcast possibly with this other girl named Bella. Um, she's black. So it would be Bella black and white. Oh, having like awkward. different experiences like just to bring attention to systemic racism and you know comparing stories like would she be able to get away with this or you know I don't know we've had a lot of different um ideas she's to live so that's really difficult right now you know um like she's not vaccinated so I'm not vaccinated either but I think I'm just gonna go get vaccinated tomorrow or Thursday tomorrow. I'm going to get vaccinated are you all vaccinated who's vaccinated I am not, none of you are vaccinated do you do anal You're sex vaccinated. Bella do you, do you like anal sex or do you You're like three dicks in your mouth I mean since we're all getting personal what what oh what <laughs> I mean if we're gonna get that personal I want to know you take three dicks in your mouth or do you like anal sex well I mean what's Right, we're asking questions, it. right? Is this no? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, oh, I didn't know like the vaccine was like as personal, but I mean, I will go with the anal Kinda. sex. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, do you have AIDS? I mean, no. I mean, oh. definitely, I'll do anal sex rather than three dicks. Like, I can barely handle one dick in my mouth, right? Like, I mean, three. I don't have that great of a gag reflex, but <laughs> three wow. definitely no. I'll There's take no. it up the ass first for sure. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that that was like a personal question, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you know, next topic. I identify as a fully vaccinated person. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to challenge me. Mm. Have you, did you get COVID? 
already? Hmm? No, no, no. Been, my I've son brought him to parties, flying on planes, going to Miami. I've been dancing to Roseville, two hundred people. That's like nineteen years old. I should have been dead weeks ago if it was going to happen. <laughs> so for me, I, I must just got. I just must be like the Highlander. So I'm just trying. I'm just eating COVID for lunch. I take a thousand milligrams of cat vitamin C a day, and um, as mentioned, I identify. As well, that's the same with my like my dad. He's hanging out with the COVID chick. He's like with my brother and sister both having COVID, he never got COVID. Negative COVID. So um, I don't know. We never all know. sort of had it. We you, had you it. Can, you can escape it. And then like I knew this guy who was married with a baby. His wife and baby had it. He never caught it. And then like two or three months later, he just randomly caught it from some friend. Mm. Oh. Yeah, and you know that guy Daryl, the comedian, he was saying he got vaccinated, then he got COVID anyway. Yeah, some people yeah. said so, that. Really? I don't know. I mean, I just, I guess if you want to travel and you want to go anywhere or like work. Well, or, anything, or if like, you want to go to the comedy store. If you want to go to the comedy store, you have to show proof of vaccination. So there yeah. are certain places requiring it. Or buy, or, or buy or buy one of those fake ones. Hours before, if you get a test 24 hours before, you can go to. Yeah, I know somebody that works at the comedy store that's just getting tested over and over and over and over again every time she goes to work because she doesn't want oh, the vaccine. God. Yeah, but uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know God. when I'm when or if I'm going to get the vaccine because I already had COVID. I'm not afraid. I've had two or three colds that were worse than COVID since then. And I got tested yeah. just to make sure that they weren't COVID. They weren't, but uh, I'm just not afraid of it anymore. So I like I like the no mask. People are starting to take off their mask in public. You can see their faces. It's kind of creepy, not being able to see, see their faces. <laughs> well, especially people could be committing crimes and getting away with it because their face is covered. And um, didn't didn't the iPhone have face recognition? It doesn't even work anymore, right? So, and then having little kids and, and they grow up not being able to see people's expressions. You can't really understand people when they're talking because, because you can't see their mouth moving. That's uh, so much better. That's so much better. Who wants, you know. Yeah, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm still I'm wearing my mask. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna be like an Asian and just wear my mask. I remember a couple of years ago, I was in Thailand, stuck in the airport. And I was literally the only one in that airport that didn't have a mask. Like in Asia, yeah. they've been wearing yeah. masks forever. Like, yeah. I'm all, I'll just be Asian and I'll wear my mask because I'm always mm -hmm. sick. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I have Even though my, my son is a walking part. fucking petri dish, though, he's literally a walking petri dish. He just comes home and discontaminates everyone, you know, because he's out like mosh pitting and smoking joints, sharing joints with they the still other do that? Oh, I Dylan. Mean, that was like a bygone thing that they're never going to do again. Wow, they're still oh. sharing joints these days. Oh yeah, these so easy to get crazy. They they're like they don't have any idea of COVID. They're like five dollars. Wow. Yeah, they're mosh pitting, sharing joints, sharing drinks, just oh, wow. you know, throwing up on each it. other. Like fuck. Like it's the good old disgusting. days. Like the good old days. Yeah. Wow. But they won't drink tap water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Don't drink the tap oh. water. <laughs> All right, Bella. Well, it's going to be fun. You're coming on our show on uh, Tuesday, July 6th. So that'll be fun to be out there in the bar scene and out in person. So yeah, that'll be fun. Cool. Cool. All right. Let's see who else we got. Sin Delgado. Back. Cool bar. Here we go. Here we go. Right, here we go. Yeah, the background's always Ooh, I'm not going to ask you any personal questions. You know, well, you know, this is what it is. And I guess I got to work on that joke because it didn't obviously didn't land well with everybody because the reaction I got was not the reaction I wanted. But it's just like, you know, everybody's asking all these questions, which is fine. You know, you can ask me, but um, it's just like, OK, like, what, when did we ask, like, do you have AIDS? Like, I, I get where we're at, but I'm just I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to get the funny out of this, you guys. OK, so stay with me. I wasn't trying to be rude, you know, but but oh, I was trying to get the other side. Like, OK, since we're asking questions. You know, I was like, okay, well, what would be that other question that I would want to know about people? Well, do you like taking three dicks in your Like, that's where these questions came out, you know? So, yeah, but you can ask yeah. me. I mean, it's just, the, so that's where that was going, but I What's don't think called? I- 
HIPAA, right? There's some rules about medical privacy that, that HIPAA, people are not yeah. supposed to ask you. So Yeah, I mean, although, I know, like I said, that was something that I was working on, asking. you know. What'd you say, Sid? Oh, I so said that was just a joke that I was working on because everybody's yeah. like all over the board. Like you said, people are wearing masks, some people aren't. I mean, I have a collection, which I'm very proud of. I don't even know if I can let go of the mask, Joe. I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm wearing doctor masks. I, I always wear like the, the same one that they wear, like nurses and doctors. So I don't know if that's cool or uncool, but I'm way more into the doctor masks than the cloth masks. So. Yeah. So, I mean, so that's where that joke was going. Like I said, I guess it landed wrong. I don't know. We could maybe ask the audience. Maybe I got to like work it up a little bit way and maybe ask a question or say something, but that's kind of like the, where, where it's at. You know, it's kind of like when someone burps or farts in front of you, I give my middle name and then I ask for your middle name. Since we're getting that comfortable, let, let's, you know, reassociate. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying when people burp and fart in front of you, there's a level of comfort, right? No. <laughs> Well, even if it's a stranger, they feel that comfortable with you. <laughs> there are rules about what people can ask. I was on a job interview when I was pregnant and mm. it happened to be for a baby food company, but they asked me if I had any kids and that kind of stumped me because I'm like, it was a woman and they had talked about their kids and stuff, but I thought, mm -hmm. I think that's illegal. They can't ask if you have kids, can they? Oh, I really? Mean, they cannot. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And I was yeah. pregnant and I didn't want to reveal it. But then I thought, well, maybe if I do reveal it, it's good because it's a baby food company. And, you know, so I was kind of like stuck between whether I should say it's never good. I didn't say anything. It's so. never good. It should. I mean, be that's why people probably plead the fifth all the time. Right. They're like, you know what? I'm not going to answer that. I mean, you know, Bill Clinton, you know, I'm yeah. just going to refer back to what I said in my statement on the last time. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I had a guy I dated, and I don't know if this is morally right or not, but his <laughs> philosophy was if somebody asks you a question that's inappropriate or overly personal, then you have every right to just lie. <laughs> because they really? shouldn't be asking that question in the first place. I'm not talking about if you're on the stand, you know, but just in Sounds general. like somebody with a lot of personal rules. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right. you know that's what he said he said if the question is too personal you you have like the right to lie that was his belief so <laughs> I wonder if that's I in the know. bible somewhere, somewhere you know says, do you have any kids and you're like I plead the fifth you know I mean it's kind of like okay <laughs> whatever <laughs> how dare you ask about my children <laughs> how dare you ask what's been in and out of my vagina I'm, gonna say, I'm surprised you'd ask that question before you know if I'm going to sue you after this interview or not. Yeah, <laughs> right. totally. So anyway, Sid, what's been going on? Are you uh, in L.A.? Um, Are you going out? What are you doing? Yeah, you know what? Um, I, I'm enjoying the L.A. traffic now. It's back to pre-COVID times. So, you know, I, I'm loving the traffic. Yeah, no, I'm not loving the traffic. But, you know, <laughs> it just reminds me that why I have road rage and why do I go to Rageaholics, you know, because because of the traffic in LA it's back yeah but I mean besides that life's good you know I decided to have a drink and hang out here at dive bar comedy um Aww. so yeah I mean I love being here it's always just a great crowd it's always alive I mean this late it's like I this agree. is great on a Tuesday I think it's fantastic you know it's like celebrating it's like taco Tuesday terrific Tuesday whatever Tuesday you want to make it this is it so oh yeah so are you gonna do our live bar shows coming up I don't oh remember. yeah, I'm like I'm excited. I'm excited that things are opening up, you know, and and I'm excited that, that everybody's just really kind to each other, whether we're wearing a mask or not, or whether you know we're vaccinated or not. Let's just we've got to stay united, you know. That's really the whole point. But I'm excited that things are opening up. I really see, you know, the joy of the kids. You know, I see the kids playing in the park now, and they hear their laughter. So that's kind of fun. You know, I don't have any Aww. kids, so I like seeing other people's kids because they're not mine. So, so you yeah. just hang around the parks. You're like, oh, yeah, I mean, I love the laughter. I don't, want, I don't want you know, any rug rats play. coming home with me, but I mean, it's nice to hear it. It's uplifting. I mean, you guys, if you guys are feeling depressed, go to the park and listen to some kids. It's really nice. I mean, they're cute at a distance. And if they're not, yeah, yours. they're usually having fun. They're usually having fun at the park. So that's a good mm -hmm. time to see them. Yeah. So that's sure. good. I'm glad actually, you know, that things are opening up schools and everything. So um, I'm just, you know, excited for them. And me too. You know, like I said, this whole traffic thing, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll start listening to more music and, start praying more i mean i don't know i'm gonna carry a rosary with me that's probably oh. what i have to do anyway <laughs> all right well welcome to the show sid i'm glad you're you're back because uh now that everything's opening nobody wants to do zoom anymore they're like i'm over zoom i only want to see people in real life so okay 
thank you guys for coming on. I like Zoom, not gonna lie. All right, let's get into it. Okay, Casey McNeil, welcome Casey. Hello. How You're here. You? Yes. Am I on? Do I have sound? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, well, there we go. I, I, I tend to project. No, you guys, we're getting personal. I wanna ask a question about, you know, we're talking about COVID and all that. I want to ask our listening audience out there and make sure that everybody's up to date on their vaccines against racism. Cause I'm thinking a lot of you motherfuckers <laughs> have not gotten it yet. And yes, I heard there is no appointment, no waiting needed. You can fix that shit whenever you're ready. Uh, so that's, that's my Carol problem. and I had to have some really big injections to get over uh, our racism. <laughs> You know, took some really big injections. But uh, you know what I want? I want the vaccine against uh, herpes. Mm. That's what they need to be working on, man. No, in my Why age, it's all, this, it's all this Took shit. them a year to find the COVID vaccine. Uh, what's going on? They're, they're very slow on this. No, at my age, it's like your vaccines for all, all kinds of old stuff. You know, it's like shingles. You got to get the shingles vaccine. You got to get all the <laughs> hey, shingles, shingles vaccine. Shit, you know, I swear to God, man. That's true. Going to the doctor, I never felt so old in my life as when I go to see the fucking doctor. And he goes through all this. Here's all the tests we need to do with you now that you're an old man. You know. <laughs> but that's that's all. true. But I want to ask you a question. You have never been to a drive-in movie I plead, I plead the fifth. I don't recall. I did not Holy recall shit. being in a I learned I learned to unmask my first bra at a drive-in movie. Wow. The one See, I was like wearing that night thing. was the one I was wearing that night was one of those undoes from the front kind. So <laughs> <laughs> no girls there, just me in the bra. But, uh, you gotta practice. Yeah, that's right. You gotta you practice. Perfect. perfect. Uh yeah, I didn't come believe never into a drive and god i mean i seriously we did a lot of that when i was young because there wasn't a whole lot else to do wow well everybody has a huge tv now in their house people aren't even going to movies much yeah, anymore when I, was, when I was a kid they were still saying in color at the beginning of, of a show like bewitched <laughs> in color you wow know, you know, that was there was a big innovation in those days because the shows were only half and half you only got like about one third of them were in color you had one of those TVs with the old knob on it. You had to turn, and when it broke, you had to put vice grips on there to make it. Hey, 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 you don't have to call me that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> the okay. good old days. I'm just happy to continue to date myself. We'll see. We'll see what my set, if I can figure out anything else to make myself any older. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Casey. So what have you been doing? Are you in LA, or where are you? No, Boston. <laughs> Boston. Oh my yeah, God. so I'm so I'm New England um, and New York, you know, stuff. I I'm doing. Um, see, I, well, here's this thing. Like, I don't understand. Everything opened up here like just about a week ago. So all of a sudden, bam! There's like three shows a night. There's like saloon comedy. Is every you know Boston's a big comedy town. So there's like shows every night of the week. There's there's mics. There's shows. There's all kinds of things going on. The clubs are back, kind of swinging back in and that. And I see all these, I see all these people booked. And I'm like, how in the fuck did you people know like three months ago that they would be open now and send your veils out like then? Like I like I looked at my calendar, I'm like, I have no fucking bookings at all. I'm in like the New England, I'm in the New England's uh, funniest uh, comedian competition, uh, July 1st, or a theater in Portland. Don't miss that, everybody. And uh, I'll be returning to Mutiny Radio Comedy Festival in uh, October in san francisco and i'm actually looking forward to you know i do a lot of other shows when i'm there they, they like at least 13 shows for them and then wow. i also do a lot of other shows in san francisco while i'm there but i'd like to swing up like to go to la or something first and come through yeah come that through part of LA. town for a week or so you know crash fourth wall and comedy chateau and all that make make felix put up <laughs> Wow. I love it. I, I'm still, I'm very impressed with that comedy chateau. That they, <laughs> I guess they opened like a month ago. Every single comic is they posting pictures April. from there. I ran into like eight people I knew in one day and Felix M McNulty, the owner, looks like a very corporate guy in pictures. But when I saw him do a set and, uh, talk to him he is like a real goofball and yeah, definitely like a bored comic. They've been open funny. since April. Yeah, They've the been open since April. Ever. Wow. Yeah, he's been walking around in an empty club for months. 
No, <laughs> not empty. They've been doing outside comedy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's people. right, outside. But he was he was. I'm just saying, like he was walking around in an empty club before that. So, mm -hmm. you know, oh yeah. Was, getting it ready well you have to right. walk around when you're getting your place ready but it, it looks really nice so he's uh yeah they give the other clubs the a run for their money right now so we'll see what happens all right casey so you've got some festivals coming up and you, you'll be coming to california in october so that's all a lot of fun so you'll have and to come back on our show before you come out in, in uh, Broad broadway october. comedy club i don't remember the date now it's in uh, July, Broadway Comedy Club in New York and uh, Greenwich Village Comedy Club in New York. I think those two clubs. Yeah. That's right. You're doing it. And, and you'll be booked very soon, I'm sure. You just have to just have to catch up. Uh, this was like That's my biggest right. fear is like that, that the COVID would end and the pandemic would end and I wouldn't know it. And I'd still be home sheltering and everybody else would be out partying. <laughs> but uh, I, guess, I guess we all got the memo now. Everybody's out partying now. So. All right. Well, welcome to the show. Okay. We got our last two comedians. They're sharing a square because they are a loving married couple. Judy and Paul. <laughs> well, we're married. And thanks, uh, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to the uh, Chateau on Saturday night. That was really yeah, great. Yeah, that was Judy's show. Judy booked that show. It was uh, Thursday great, night. A lot of great we're comedians. Together. We threw it together because the rent theater was under construction and something happened. And I called I called Felix and goes, Yeah, let's let's do it. I said, okay, and everybody came through. Yeah, it was fun. I it saw the promo. It that. was a lot of fun. Were great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, I didn't even have to do flies. I was just putting everybody's picture up there. The hottest one, of course, was was uh Wild Joe. I said you gotta put that picture up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Joe, your pictures that you post, you you, you made a po a Facebook post that had some pictures on it too. Right? Yeah, it was really I hot. Did. I we posted a picture. picture of myself on stage, which uh, Bella was going to take a picture of me while I was performing. I said, right, right before I went up, she was there. I said, "Can you take a picture of me?" And oh, she yeah. forgot. So I had to go up yeah. afterward and pretend I was performing. Oh, uh, so. there's one of you that outside. Was a great picture. Picture. That was a great picture that you took on stage. Yeah, there was one of yeah, you outside. Did, oh, you were just really. Yeah. There's a picture of me outside. Oh, okay. That was on the flyer, I think. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was so much fun. It's hard to get good pictures. That's the thing I miss. You know, when we're going into these real bars, comedy clubs have good lighting. Bars have terrible lighting. So, if when it comes to filming or taking pictures it never comes out right. So it's going to be a challenge moving uh, our show into the dark, loud, <laughs> no, I know. I comedy, hate, you know, bar scene thing. environment. It's terrible. If you think I look bad now, like you put it in the saloon, <laughs> I'm like, I, I look like the, I look like the killer on criminal minds or something, you know, no, I'm, you not can the, never I'm, look I'm like the main criminal. guy. I'm like the guy that gets killed off at the first break. You look like a happy killer. <laughs> Very All happy right. killer. Judy and Bob, you guys so have we're done, going, uh, we're going to, done uh, some couples like playing off each other comedy before. Have How's that going? Have you guys been working on a, a duo act at all or you're just doing your well, own? We always do the duo act. at the end, of, end of our act. We're going to casino. I got, uh, it's not Lake Tahoe. We're going to Reading at a casino. So I got called into headline. He's, he's going to open and at the end we always do five minutes we've been doing that for two years he comes up at the end and the audience goes oh we knew it was your husband we knew it yeah, yeah so and then i go to new york i leave him bob here i'm working at the comic strip and stayed up new york okay and, well i started there for the first 10 years before i came here so and bob he's uh he's full-time now after four years of punching him going you gotta do your comedy full-time yes Great. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing great. You guys are so mean to each other in your stand-up. You both say, Insult say each things other. like, I can't stand my husband, or I, I can't stand my wife. I hate him. I hate her. Yeah. Uh, True, we do hate him. Does it, I can't does stand it make you guys uh, get he's upset? In his face, in his face, in his face. Listen, does it make you guys get upset to hear each other say mean things? This question is for Bob. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I, I sometimes I go too far. Judy, with, like, she talks too much. I, I've been trying to tone it down. I don't You've been trying to tone it down. Yeah. Okay. So you haven't yeah, been like, trying to match you know, Judy's level. 
of meanness. <laughs> no, somebody, uh, somebody, some couple of her friends came to one of the shows, and I really ranked on her. And they said afterwards, you go, well, you're really mean about her. And I said, all right, all right. I could take care of myself. Did you really just said he ranked on me? Who uses ranked anymore? I ranked on her. I ranked on her. <laughs> so I wanted to tell the uh, comedian who talked about three cocks in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> my, yes. my girlfriend was a go-go dancer. They called her Hot Dog Shannon. She could deep throw five hot dogs. So, you know, it's possible to be three penis. <laughs> <laughs> at the same three time, like five, five, like five at the same time. Same time, same time. They called her Hot Dog Shannon. And she never <laughs> introduced me to her. That's a choking <laughs> hazard. That's a real choking hazard. If one of those broke off in your mouth. She was wow. a pro she's a professional, you know. You know, Joe. <laughs> I still want to meet her. Bob still wants to know. They might have been rubber. They might have been rubber hot dogs. You know what I mean? So that, that wouldn't happen. I would think they're rubber, so it's a whole gimmick. You know what I mean? But she still stuck five of them right down. So I want to let the other comedian know. What's her name? Bell, uh, Sin. 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 Hi, Sin. Hi, Judy. Wow. Rubber yes, so we're dogs, bringing real hot dogs. I don't know which is worse. Actually, real hot dogs probably worse because it smells oh. also. Well, you can't do real hot. You know, it could break off. Like you said, I think it was rubber. I think she had rubber hot dogs because God forbid it did break off. And then we'd have to give her, you know, the Heimlich. And I don't feel like Heimlicking a goa dancer. I have to touch her tits and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> hot dogs. That's what I guess, touch my tits. Wow. <laughs> I mean, liked it. I like my husband's tits. Hey. <laughs> I once went to um, like a contest, like where like a stripping contest, and there was this black girl. I guess it's not about race, but she happened to be black, and she had a glow stick. Her trick was she stuck a glow stick up herself, and then she squeezed it out on the stage. I don't even know if that's legal, but but that's what she did. <laughs> she just squeezed it out, or she squeezed it out of somebody's face. I think she just squeezed it out. That was like her big trick. Uh -oh. so, she had done with ping pong balls. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what she <laughs> got her points. I've I don't remember if she won. Ball. I don't think she did actually, but uh, uh, she did raise the bar as far as expected. <laughs> and that's well, important. We'll be, we'll be doing that on our comedy stage, so that's for sure. No, uh, no ping pong. No. Okay. No sticks. Uh, can I tell a quick story? Oh, yes, no. Bob. If you could get I, a word in edgewise. Yeah, right. I know. Leave me alone. I haven't talked all the whole time. So I, uh, I, bar I bartended at uh, Gotham Comedy Club. Oh, my ago, God. Right? And they had, inside. they had this uh, private um, party downstairs, and they had a stripper come in, and it was a waitress that I worked with there at the club, <laughs> and she called herself Bubbles, <laughs> but she was picking up $20 bills off the guy's noses with her twat. Anyway, I do that with Bob all the time. <laughs> well, she's working. Was, she's working double time. Bubbles is working yeah. double. Well, I, I saw her the next <laughs> night upstairs. I was bartending upstairs, and I'm like, "Should I call you Christine tonight, or is it Bubbles, or what's your name tonight?" That's it. <laughs> That's a real well, talent. Picking up, picking up a dollar bill with your. That's, you know. <laughs> That's a talent. Can I talk wow. now? Can I say this if I said that, Joe? No. Wow, I don't know how you guys are gonna do your sets when you when you're both in the same square because Judy is probably gonna end up doing two sets instead. <laughs> what is with you, Joe? You're always picking on me about. You're trying. right. You're right, Joe. You're right. Was I, how, can I get a witness here? I've been a whole opening. I just shut my mouth. I sat here. I listened. <laughs> no, you didn't interrupt That's any so of us. Funny. You just. You just don't let Bob speak. You just don't let him speak. Not What's even a Bob, who talks all the fucking time. It's no, it's true. It's true all the time. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> oh, that's even sitting up for Bob. I get it. I get it. I get it. Thank you. Well, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to let Bob have a little turn. That's all. You Thank know? you. Well, live with us for a week. You'll see how many turns he gets every day. Oh, she'll take my side every time. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I many therapists right now? You know how many therapists we've gone to? Couple 
therapy and, and did Co the therapist. We've been, we go all the time. And I and always did the, said, therapist, uh, said, did the therapist have a side? Did, did the therapist seem to like one more? Well, let me see. You know what I do? She says to me, do you want to go to, would you go to therapy with me? And I said, sure, I'll go. Because I sit down and they go, who goes first? I go, Judy, you go first. And I just sit down and they, those two go at it the whole time. It's great. <laughs> You shouldn't, talk about, you shouldn't talk about Bob like that. You shouldn't say those things about Bob. Bob takes oh, yeah, Joe. Yeah. Hey, Joe, you want to like this. One of the therapists told me to shut the fuck up. In those <laughs> words? Because I was making sense. I said, my husband and I, I was telling him some things that I wanted to do, like, you know, get yeah. us closer. Yeah. And I guess I came on no. too strong. She controls everything. She goes, don't tell him that. That's not what he's supposed to hear. Don't tell him that. <laughs> okay, Joe, let, let me ask you something. We go to this therapist, right? And in front of Bob, he says to me, he's not going to change. I said, he's here. I said, give him a fucking activity. He said, he'll change. I said, do you know how many husbands or boyfriends won't come? I said, he's here in the flesh. And that's when he told me to shut the fuck up. It was great. I think I made a very good point, though, Joe. She said yeah. to me, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you say anything when he told me to shut the fuck up? I said, because I didn't blame him. <laughs> wow. I only went to a therapist for a short time, and our only issue was I paid her cash. Tell me what you guys think. I paid her cash. I put it in her hand at the end. She says, you don't need to put it in my hand. You can just put it on the table. I feel like that's more hookerish to just set it on the table. Like, <laughs> that's she awful. Like she How many times did you go to her? Handling money or something. Mm. You know? She didn't I want a hand know. job. She didn't want a hand job. But how, <laughs> how many times did you go to her? 10, 20, uh, uh, like a, for a few months. That's so, so weird. Isn't that, don't put it in my she, hand. She didn't want me to directly hand her the money. She wanted me to put it on the table. I'm like, that's like even more hookerish. I mean, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> you, blow her, you blow her a kiss on the way out. It's hard to break some habits, Joe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> put the money on the table. I won't put the money on the table. Through. Blow me a yeah, kiss. Stick, you should have blown her a stick, kiss too. Stick, Thank stick, you. Stick, stick. <laughs> All right, you guys. Okay, let's let's get into our Mr. C. Mr. C, I saw you. You did a set the other night. Uh, he closed the show. He cl you closed the show. Yeah. How was that? It's all right. It's a product of my uh, natural CP time, I'm sure. Um, but it was fun, man. It was great to be back on stage in front of real people, seeing real faces, seeing real laughs. You know, six feet away from me. Yes. Yes. Well. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We have some good shows coming up and we're gonna be back on stage all over town, just like Carol, very soon. Hey, welcome yeah. back to Cavity. <laughs> all right, well, let's get our dive bar comedy started. All right, that's right. That's all, right. That's all I come in here, it's time for the dive bar comedy show. And yeah, we'll be back in those uh, bars. I'm gonna get some lights too, because uh, I think I can grab some lights off of Amazon. You know, at Bezos, he got all that shit. Mm -hmm. So get some light. I think we all need that. Um, but yeah, yeah it's the Dive Bar Comedy Show. <clears throat> I'm Mr. Senior Enforcer. Of course, we have Ms. Wild Joe and Ms. Karen Noel open it up with the host and the technical skills. And all our comedians had a great talk. Of course, this show is all about fun, fantasy, education, entertainment, distraction, determination. We got COVID talks. We got three dicks and mouths. We got five hot dogs. Yeah. D, the stripper, whatever her name is. We got Bob and them fighting therapists, fist fighting. Joe's trying to buy a kilo of Coke off her therapist. That's why they don't want to touch the money. This <laughs> shit goes down at the Dog Bar Comedy Show. So you guys ready for the Dog Bar Comedy Show? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right, 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 right. So I just put a random order to everything. So we're going to jump it off with one of the classic family favorites. She's actually what Wild Joe's running, buddy. She was also at the show this weekend at the Comedy Chateau, which I love. It reminds me of Flappers. Great place and whatnot. And this lady right here is also very flexible and earthy. So, you know, when the apocalypse comes, you want to learn how to grow some food, be healthy, Track this lady down because she's going to keep you alive. Remember that. Well, I'm looking for you. So if you see me coming, you better run. I'll tell you that because I'm going to need to do. So it's going to be like, oh. <laughs> so you guys ready for this next comedian? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. Clap, 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 cl
I was gonna, I wanted to open up with this. Um, can you guys see this? Oh, you're not gonna be able to see this. No. Work. My daughter was like, you should have told me sooner. But anyway, I'll just explain it to you. You have to use your imagination a little bit. Well, I was thinking about coming onto stage in this yoga pose called TT Basana, which is basically like I put my head between my legs and then grab my arms and then walk like that, like walking, 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 right? And that's how it would come out. But unfortunately, I don't have the visual for you. So, and you're probably wondering, like, why do you spend like all this time, like many hours a day, like twisting yourself into a pretzel, putting your head up your ass. And I'm just going to be honest. It's because like, I'm really fucked up. <laughs> and I, and you know, most people who do yoga, they're probably yeah, they're dealing with a lot of issues. Now, me and my person, my, myself, um, I was born from the loins of Lucifer. Yeah. <laughs> my mother is, in fact, Satan. So, yeah, it's kind of annoying because I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm going to become my mother, right? And I didn't plan on living this long. Like, I didn't plan on actually living long enough to turn into my mother so I'm like fuck I hope the therapy works because <laughs> yeah I just started just started therapy now that I'm almost 50 I have to depend on my my wits and not my tits but I will say that about yoga is your tits look very good upside down another <laughs> bonus but yeah, I was, I used to do yoga just for my abs and ass, but now I'm like almost completely disabled. I can barely walk. People are like, yeah, so I'm mentally disabled and physically disabled. Yeah. <laughs> so thankfully we have yoga for medicine. Um, yeah. So when I was 16, when I was sweet 16, I ran away to be a stripper. And this must have been before like people were shoving hot dogs in their mouths and mm -hmm. picking up $20 bills with their twats. It was actually a very like sweet, innocent time. People danced on tables. It was before dry fucking became a thing, you know. And then I'm like in Vegas making like, you know, $900 a night cash, just sweeping the, the money off the stage with my hands. I barely able to hold it all. You know, it was like fucking amazing. Just raining down money. Anyway, but then I picked up these hitchhikers on the side of the road and I was feeling rather depressed because the boyfriend I went there with, he was dating a hooker. So I was like, do you have any acid? Because, you know, I really need to like change my mindset. And they're like, no, we don't have acids, but we have shrooms. And I'm like, oh good, let me take all of those. You know, no problem because I'm a, I'm a tripper from way back. So I take all the shrooms and they're like, you need to come to Hollywood and be a star and dancing in a strip bar is way too good for you. So yeah, of course I ran out to Hollywood and um, where I was proceeded to be like molested and rubbed on by men older than my father for free so I was like thank you so much for that great advice bravo because it just like occurred to me with the like the me too movement that actually being a stripper with like great big bodyguards on steroids was the safest place to be because literally the men were sexually harassing people and everywhere right so I came out here and it was just like non-stop sexual harassment so yeah thank you for that big favor guys yeah. <laughs> it really didn't occur to me also until like I had children and then I'm like yeah I don't think I want to be fucking my son's 18 year old friends you know like what are 40 year olds thinking like oh let me go fuck an 18 year old <laughs> right I don't know so I actually did write down a couple more jokes. 
I don't know. I was going to surprise you all with jokes today. I know. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to really just shock them all. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I guess that's all I wrote. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember one more thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I always had this thing like you are who you do. So I thought like if I just fucked really rich guys, I mean, sorry, really smart guys, I would get, it would like rub off on me. But now that I'm older, I'm thinking like, I probably should have like gone to college or something, you know, <laughs> but live and learn, right? All right. Thank you everyone for letting me go first. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The dive bar comedy show starting off with a little holistic happiness and also some deep words of wisdom. So young ladies, let me teach you some street knowledge. If your boyfriend has a hooker for a girlfriend, he's not your boyfriend, he's a pimp. <laughs> and they convince you to move to a big city where everything's really shitty, it was hoping they were going to turn to his next hoe. Mm. So, lesson learned for everybody. And Bella Rose just saved girls across America, and that's what true feminism is about. Round of applause for Bella Rose. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Uh oh. <laughs> right, right. So we'll hop right into our next comedian. We always alternate, you know, girl, boy, girl, boy. So we got the the, the boys sandwiched in the middle with the girls and all that, you know, but it's more like a stack. Anyway, we got the next one coming to the stage. This gentleman's one of the classics, and this gentleman is large and in charge and Mr. Cool and Sane. He is married. He has been through all kinds of things. He has had therapists and him make eye contact for hours and never talk. This guy right here is going to give you all that it is and more. He is now a full-time comedian. Round of applause for full-time comedy, baby. Good. Ooh, goddamn right. You guys ready for the next comedian? Can I get a year? Yeah. yeah. Right, that's right. So this time we come to the stage, got one of the best names because there's three letters, just like the best three numbers in the universe. B O B. That's Bob Nissen. Oh, thank you so much. Wow. I, I I can't I can't I can't top that. That's incredible. Listen, uh, I did not get vaccinated yet uh, because uh, I got my vaccination years ago at Petco. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, my uh, my mother was an alcoholic, and uh, I got to tell you that sometimes when I was a kid, she'd actually give me uh, one of her drinks when I'd go to bed at night. Uh, it still affects me today because I go into bars and say, uh, "Give me a bourbon on the rocks." And you know what? Make sure you put that in a sippy cup. <laughs> uh, this is my first time, by the way, of uh, doing comedy with my glasses on. I have never. Uh, Never done. Uh, my mother, uh, this is true, was married eight times, uh, probably because she, uh, you know, <laughs> drank a lot. But uh, I got to tell you, it made for an interesting childhood because I have these fond memories of coming downstairs in the morning and going, hey, mom, how are you? Well, <laughs> who's this? This must be Frank. No, Joe. Sorry, Joe. Uh, my name is Bob, and I guess I'll be your son for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, my name is Bob. Uh, that used to be a popular name. It's not that popular uh, anymore. Uh, I'm even, even having trouble with people's new names, you know, or the way they pronounce them. Like I knew this girl, she spelled her name A-D-R-I-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. uh, that's Adrian, right? Adrian. I said, hey, Adrian, how you doing? No, it's Adriany. Adriany. What? Where do you get that? I had friends, their name was Cecil. Oh, is it now it's Cecil. Don't call me Cecil. So I'm gonna go uh, on the train there and I'm gonna change my name. It's no longer Bob. I want everyone to call me Bob. Okay? <laughs> I love Bob, it. how you doing? I'm sorry, it's Bob. <laughs> Bob. Bob. Bobby, how you doing? It's Bobby. Bobby, please. <laughs> Have some respect, these people. Uh, so I guess you know, I, I like to prefer really say that I'm not in a relationship uh, because I'm married. Uh, that's the way that goes. Uh, you know, my wife is Italian, though, and uh, she's an Italian woman who can't cook. Right. I mean, 
I got to tell you, I didn't even think there were Italians that existed who couldn't cook. I thought when an Italian baby was born, the first thing when they came out of the womb, they go, and the umbilical cord, and these are little water garlic, and these are little water garlic. <laughs> Before an Italian baby even learned the first thing, an Italian baby, you know what they learned to do? They learned to stir the sauce, stir the sauce before they do anything. Add the sauce, and these are little water garlic, a little more garlic. Okay, I'm going to ram that home, a little more garlic. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think. Uh, so, um, I am uh, married, uh, like I said. My wife, I don't know if people do this. She will call me up, and if if I don't pick up my phone, and she's angry at me, which is a lot, uh, she will yell at me anyway on my voicemail. I mean, who does that? One time she left me a seven-minute voicemail. Seven minutes. Yeah, at first I saw them, like, that's just, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's just, and then I thought about it, like, you know what? That's pretty impressive. I mean, think about it. Nonstop, no rehearsal. Meryl Streep couldn't do that. <laughs> you know what's even more ridiculous, though, than leaving a seven-minute voicemail? Listening to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I listened to the whole thing. <sighs> you know what's even more ridiculous? Dick, <laughs> Dick's in the mouth. You know what's more ridiculous <laughs> than listening to a seven-minute voicemail? <laughs> Arguing with it. What? I didn't say. You're the liar. I'm not. You're the liar. Yes, I would argue with it. So I, uh, I bartended for many years. Uh, it, it's not the same today as it used to be. Uh, I used to make drinks like gin and tonics and bourbon and cokes. There's a drink that was popular uh, for a long time. It's called the blueberry muffin. Blue. Have you heard of that? The blueberry muffin. It's mm -hmm. blueberry vodka with Seven Up. And I thought to myself. How can you even brag about drinking a drink called the blueberry muffin? You know, you go into work the next day, you've got a terrible hangover, your workmates are looking at you, and they're like, wow, Bob, you look <laughs> all back. You look really, like, really bad. What's the matter? Last night, I went out, and I had way too many blueberry muffins. <laughs> ah! Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I am tired of all these uh, flavored vodkas. I got to tell you, they have, uh, you know, lemon flavored vodka, orange flavored, blueberry flavored vodka. I got to tell you this. They came out with a new one. It's called Botanical. What is Botanical? Now mm. you have customers going up to bartenders saying, you got a flavored vodka that tastes something like, I don't know, plants. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I am getting a little tired. I don't even notice this, but a lot of times politicians or CEOs of companies, uh, when they quit, they will quit like, you know, I, I'm quitting and it's effective in six months. And I'd say to myself, we could never do that. I could never do that. Can you imagine going into my boss's office and go, you know what? I'm tired of this place. This place is a dump and I'm tired of you. You understand me? I quit. In six months, I'm out of here. <laughs> can't do that today i will uh, finish with this i live in a building with a lot of russians in it uh not the friendliest of people uh, i think that they think the cold war is still going on uh i waved to my actual neighbor outside the other day he's vladimir how you doing and this is his reaction i'll take off my glass this one. <laughs> not even a nod right but he's got this adorable three-year-old little daughter. With, hey, Natasha, how you doing? And this was her reaction. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's my time. Thank you very much. What happened to Ray Romano? Thank you. What happened to Ray Romano? Yeah. Yeah. Ray Romano? Yeah. Yeah. Impressions. My time was done. Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. So much in my chops. Right? And Bob brought up a classic thing. If you live in L.A., there is a secret core of Russians that dominate apartment complexes. My homeboy lives in West L.A. The only reason he lives there is because we met a Russian kid that liked to do a lot of drugs, and he became our friend. Past that, mm. if he didn't tell them, don't kill them when they move in, they wasn't moving in. And, and they met a couple <laughs> brothers and white boy who were over there. But past that, it is the same thing. I come out there, boy, I've been coming there for four years late night i smoke cigarettes too so i'm out there mm, 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 mm. and they don't even get me to look back they just 
and pick up the phone with dial nine one one. The Soviet. Oh, they're gangster, man. They're gangster. Gangster. And Bob dropping the knowledge. Excellent job. Another round of applause for Bob Nissi. Woo! Thank you so much. Thank you. Woo! That's right. That's right. That's right. So we're going to jump into our next comedian. We're going to give a lady. And it's the other half of the coin as we split it up. Come back to back like cook crack with nobody wearing slacks. Like he got his ding a ling swinging from back to back because he got jacked in the car by a cop. His body dropped and people didn't stop because they went home and the gun went like. So you guys ready for this next comedian? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah. For this next comedian to the stage, I love this next comedian's name because not only is she Italian, her last name sounds like her family invented a bread. It tastes just like it. But hey, hey, give me some of that chinchata bread. Hey, hey, give me some French chinchata bread. Hey, you gotta say hey, hey. <laughs> That's what we call culture and manners in the Italian family. You guys don't know nothing about it. That's right. Your parents didn't beat you guys enough. Nah. <laughs> anyway, you guys ready to be blessed by the bread of true comedy? Mm-hmm. Yes. So like Jesus, she's about to break the bread and hand it and feed all of your souls. Can I get a clap, 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 clap? For Judy, I got the bread, Chintado. I'm gonna do my, my jokes off, off camera. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. I'm serious. Yes, yes, Mr. C. They they call my 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 name Chinchado. And it's like going into a Mexican resta- restaurant because I'd say, can I have some cilantro? And a chinchado. I'm a burrito. I should have been named <laughs> Chinchado. I mean, I should have been named like Isabella, you know, Alexandria. Chinchado. Not Judy. This is my father. Are you drunk, you drunk when I was born? Judy. One, one time I was in New York City, I took my first class, you know, your first like commercial acting class. And the teacher said to me, you got to change your name. I said, I know. I said, it's so long. He goes, no, you got to change that first name, Judy. <laughs> so anyway, so my husband, what are you doing, Bob? Look at staring at me. You know, let me tell you something. He always says that I never compliment him. I, you know, I kind of give backhanded compliments because he's kind of sarcastic and I try to get back at him. But last year, he lost so much weight. Right, Bob? You lost weight. And I was so supportive to him. I said, you should feel great about yourself and keep your double chin up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. It's killing me. So we met old school. People said, where did you meet? No internet, no match.com, no Tinder. We met in an elevator. When people hear this, they go, that is so romantic. Met in an elevator. I said, no, I should have gotten off on my floor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that usually kills, Bob. Shut up. So um, getting a little older, and I love going out to clubs. I mean, you know, before or now after the COVID, and I love when young guys would drink a lot because I looked really good to them. I, I, was at, I was at the improv and that guy was standing like, you know, all the way at the other end of the bar. He goes, hey, hey. I'm like, oh God, he doesn't know how old I am. So he walks up to me and he's really drunk. He's like, hey, you look really hot. I'm like, listen, I'm a little older than you. I could even be like your aunt. He goes, no, no, you look really hot. I'm like, let me tell you something. You're seeing double which means my skin is really soft right now. I said, you're probably seeing triple. And that means I look 15 and that's date rape. So take a walk, not too far, because I have like attention. <laughs> so here we are. And Joe, it's so fun to be on this, uh, on our, on your dive bar comedy. Um, we started out together, me and GT in the, at the comedy store. I'm a paid regular at the comedy store. And uh, they, they told me to leave. They told me to leave because I was sexually harassed. Uh, I was sexually assaulted, and I and I told on the guy. And I said, you know, Judy, can you leave? <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's all right. Mitzi wasn't there anymore, so I didn't care. She was great to me, though. She was great. It was a great time for me when I was at the comedy at the comedy store. I was with Dice Clay, Joe Rogan, um, uh, uh, Sebastian, Maz Gibrani just did our show for us in at the Rent Theater. We're going to be doing the Rent Theater soon too. And um, so this is so cute. I go to my dentist's office yesterday, yesterday. I walk in and my dentist goes to me, Judy, Judy, I saw you with Maz Giovanni. 
Master Ronnie was taping the whole show at that end. He goes, that was you. I said, yeah. He goes, oh, he goes, I went, oh, my Judy, my Judy. He's with Master Ronnie. You had to be there. You had to be there. Is anybody there? Yeah, yeah, we're all here. <laughs> Does anybody know Maz Gibrani? <laughs> I love Maz Gibrani. It's great, it's great. I, anybody, I, I hate Dice Clay. The reason I had to leave the comedy store because me and Dice Clay had a roast, a roast. And when roasting was not going on, we got, kind of derived out of me and Dice Clay and I won the roast. And after that, so that's when it started to decline. But, you know, uh, you have to really just be grateful for the gems of stage time and development. And Mr. Shore was amazing. For four or five years, I worked every, when you when you passed at the comedy store, you worked four or five nights a week. It was like it was like winning the lottery for a comedian, you know? So it was a great time. And now we're back on the road. You know, we're doing the casino, but, it, you know, things are not filled up yet. So um, we can't really go out on the road like we used to because the money's not there. But we have, you know, we have the comedy chateau. We have, mm -hmm. we have coming to you on, on your a dive bar. A Zoom show, oh, Joe, and we love. We, we, we're really happy you well, you invited us. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, let's see. And the Ren, the Ren Theater. So, so I just want to say that I did have an operation recently. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a total hysterectomy. <gasps> yeah, total hysterectomy, which was fine. No, it worked. It was a great. It was a success. They they cleaned me out. And um, what I what, what I basically did was I gave birth. I gave uh, one minute. Yeah, one minute. I can do a lot in one minute. I, I can have an orgasm in one minute. They told me. All right. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Bobby. That's my time. That's my time. So I said to the, the doctor, I said, so I'm giving birth to my fallopian tubes. Is that what I'm doing? So they took out my fallopian tubes, my cervix, my, um, my, uh, my uterus. And I said, now, when you have a diagram, you can see all of that in the diagram. I said, now that it's all out, what does it look like now? The doctor says to me, he goes, nobody's ever asked me that. I said, well, what does it look like? So he says, well, come here. And he takes me into the bathroom and he points at the bathroom sink. He goes, that's what it looks like. Like a basin, like a sink. I can wash your clothes. <laughs> okay, that's the punchline. Okay. <laughs> no. So one more joke before I go, one more joke. When, when I was in the New York City, uh, we had a lot of people that used to like, you know, women had to really fight on that stage and because mm. guys were like really give us a hard time uh, um, sometimes. And this guy was screaming at me. I was on the stage. He goes, hey, because my friend wants head. I'm like, oh my God, I'm on stage. He goes, my friend wants head. I went, well, give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Can't wait to see the rest of everybody. Yeah. Yeah, another round of applause for Judy Chanchado. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. The classic is this thing on? Is this thing on? I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm freaking telling jokes here. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta move your shoulders. I don't know. Maybe it's one of my things. I'm probably because I'm a racist. So that round of applause for Judy Chicago. All right, 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 right. So we're gonna move into our next comedian. And good thing, like she also mentioned, is that everything is opening back up. I'm seeing them pulling down the signs, people walking around without masks in stores, out of stores. I'm just carrying one as a courtesy, just so I don't scare people and whatnot. But everything's going down. And this next comedian is a wonderful gentleman, super talented. He mentioned something earlier. He said, man, when I got bad lighting, I look like a serial killer. Mm -hmm. Well, as a presidential candidate that knows the statistics for serial killers with great lighting, sir, you look like a serial killer. <laughs> so his next gentleman coming to the stage is a spicy gentleman, a lot of personality and a lot of cool. And he got a great name. It sounds like he's a good running back or a quarterback. It's like, oh my God, McNeil goes in the hole. McNeil intercepts the ball and runs back something like that. Oh my God, McNeil, I'll sit out with a shot watch. Woo, I like that name. So you guys ready for this next comedian? Can I get a year? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. C. That was a nice introduction. I'm excited to hear what I'll say. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you guys do, you guys, I heard a lot of the DNA stuff. Is out. You guys done the DNA thing? How many of you done yeah, the DNA thing? I did. I did. 
Yeah. I, I finally got a chance to take one of those DNA tests. Turns out I'm innocent. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to do the 23 and me thing because I know how it's going to come out. It'd be 50% Irish and 50% hillbilly. It just means I grew up too lazy to beat my children. Nah. <laughs> what is the, which 50% is the, not, no, I don't, uh, but no, I would be afraid to do that. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you do those tests, they can not only tell you about your, your nationality, your lineage and that, but they can also tell you who your actual relatives are if they've done the test themselves. Hmm. Oh, like mm -hmm. the home wrecking kit or something. Like we didn't wear condoms in the eighties, you guys. Like I, I'd be afraid <laughs> to take that test now. Like, some of these people now, they must be like, Hey, did you get your 23 and me results? I sure did. It says here I'm 50% French and 50% our neighbors, my dad. Um, <laughs> but it's, they should come like with a coupon for therapy or something in those things. But I, I don't know if you guys heard this, but DNA testing revealed that a retired postman in Kentucky has 1,300 illegitimate children. Nice. The postman rings 1,300 times. <laughs> he, asked the guy, he was not even embarrassed about it at all. Not ashamed mm. at all. With a perfectly fucking straight face, this guy goes, well, I had a really good Johnny Cash impression. <laughs> I'm like, that's it? All I needed was a rendition of Folsom Prison Blues. I'd have been slaying trim as a kid. Like, I, mm, okay. Now, me, on the other hand, I have been married for 28 years. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Three different women. They're <laughs> the mothers of my children. Well, most of my children. Uh, <laughs> but no, I thought, like the first time I should have known it wasn't going to work. I mean, no offense, Bella, but here's a line I think you'll never hear. I was dating a stripper and everything turned out great. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, at, at my bachelor party, she was the one that popped out of the cake. Uh -uh. Like my in-laws wrote better luck next time on it. So <laughs> but I didn't have any better luck next time. The second time, I, but my second wife and I, we always had those, those, you know, we had those irreconcilable differences and stuff. You just, it's just impossible to work out. And she was left Twix. I was right Twix. Never going to happen. So I got married. I married a younger girl. Yeah, that's okay. I, 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 don't know if that's up I got it, it. I got it. I got yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. But I, I married a younger girl. And so now sex is a lot different than that. There's a lot of sex toys in the relationship now. And uh, like, how is a man supposed to compete with sex toys, you guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, are you kidding me? Uh, it, it reminds me of being a, it reminds me of being a comic on a show where you're not the headliner, right? Because <laughs> after the show to the headliner, my wife says, oh my God, that was fantastic. Then she looks at me and says, oh, you were fun too. <laughs> uh, something for the back of the room you guys okay so like, but no i wouldn't want to go through it again the dating rituals these young people and stuff the things that they do talking about bars i do a lot of saloon comedy i'm sitting next to these guys and i don't drink i haven't drank in a long time i'd sit next to these guys and they're and they're drinking and, and, and they're doing their their young guy thing which i think is kind of always been these guys they're rating women according to how much they would have to drink before they would sleep with them so mm -hmm. this guy always be like, hey, hey, yeah, you see that one across the bar over there? Yeah, I'd probably need to drink like six beers before <laughs> I can sleep with her. What he doesn't know is she's looking over at him going, huh, maybe if I was on heroin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but then, and then the rituals they go through now, like you sent these young people, you send pictures of your of your dick to people. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't even look at mine when I shower. Like I, I have a thought. I have a thousand questions for you. How do you pose it? Are, <laughs> are there like Snapchat filters? Mine's a tiger. Growl. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so they say the average age of somebody that does this is like 24 years old. Do you guys have any idea what I would have to do to send a picture of my Johnson to somebody when I was 24 years old? <laughs> First, I'd have to go buy film for the camera. <laughs> Set up a tripod, take that black and white roll for the noir effect, you know. Now I can go down to the one hour photo mat to get it developed. Now, for those of you kids out there that don't know what the one hour photo mat was, this is a place where you took your pictures down. A guy stood there in front of you and developed it for you while you waited. Yeah, that's not an awkward conversation in 1984. I don't know, Bill, do you think my dick looks better in the glossy or the matte finish? <laughs> <laughs> now I've got an hour to go buy stamps and envelopes, right? Pen up that letter. Dearest Ernestine, check this jump, right? Send that up. Wait a couple weeks for that reply. Oh, I finally mm. heard something back. Mm. New address. Who dis? Oh, <laughs> 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 well, 
But no, I tell you, <laughs> but they say men have always been the same. And I'm telling you, I can't. A woman said this to me the other day. She said, men have been that way since caveman times. Mm. Like, how did a guy send a picture of his dick at caveman times? Like, you draw it out on a rock, like one of those petroglyphs, you know? <laughs> Cave drives like, here, Grog, you take Sheena. Bring back answer. Right? <laughs> but, oh, oh, Grog, what'd she say? Let's see. Uh, her letter have guy with spear, a uh, tree, a buffalo, uh, another buffalo, eggplant, donut. Look like you golden. <laughs> so, so, that's how you get recognized when you do this thing. You guys know this. People stop you on the street, but they don't know what they know you from. This guy stopped me the other day. He said, wait, wait, don't come any closer. I know you. I recognize you. I've seen you before, right? You're that guy, aren't you? You're him. You're that killer from Criminal Minds, aren't you? No, that's <laughs> not me, guys. My name's Casey McNeil. Thanks a lot. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Dick Pig gang in the house and whatnot. And yo, real talk. I mean, you had to actually go through a lot of effort. One thing I learned about guys, as I am one, we will do anything for the possibility of pussy. The deterrent really wasn't like the effort of going. It was the fact that the person that was developing them was going to look at those shits as they developed, and there was no way getting around it back then. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I mean? Now you can take a picture, put it in your phone, save it, put it on private, send it here, lock it there. But yeah. now, so what we should do is, and as president, I may have to do this, add a picture monitoring program where it is guaranteed that every picture you upload to the cloud is viewed by one person of dignity. <laughs> <laughs> They're still going to give it to you, but at the end of the picture, when it gets delivered to your stuff, there might be just a picture of them like... <laughs> <laughs> Good picture though. Way to use the toilet for perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. So once again, now applause for Casey McDade. All right, all right, right, right. So we got our closing comedian come to the stage. And this lady right here, I know she's got an inbox full of dick pics, even though she don't even probably want. So this is how you know it's going down, my man. Casey could see it. Now this lady right here is a wonderful talent. She can do so many things. The woman is a DJ. The woman is a model. The woman is a comedian. I think she even used to gangbang because she got a lot of tattoos. So you know it's all everything and all you want right now. Are you guys ready to get everything that the world has to offer? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. 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 Right, just yeah. like good, the work that we all gotta have to go against good is some sin. So can I get some clap, 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 clap for sin and got go. <laughs> Woo! Well, all, all those jobs that I've had, I, I didn't know. Gang bang, modeled. Thank you. I think they kind of correlate with each other. So that's right. Watch out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm glad to be here, you guys. You know, I don't know how many shots I've had, but I'm going to say, you know, it's good when you have, when you lose count. I'm going to say that. When you lose count of how many shots you've had, it's a good night. It's going to be a good night. I mean, I don't know. But I mean, I mean, this weekend, you know, everything's opening up, which is fantastic. Um, my girlfriend and I went to a, a picnic this weekend, which was really cool. You know, it was really nice. I found a park, a mm. Betty Davis Park. I don't know if you guys know about that, but it's really calm. The squirrels are out there. Let me tell you something I learned about squirrels. They're some bougie motherfuckers. They're picky as fuck. Yeah. I'm so let me paint the picture. We're having a good time. You know, my dog, Ruby, she's a cute little chug. And next thing you know, these squirrels just jump into the tree. And they have their little topper. And the next thing you know, I'm like, oh, how cool. You know what? I actually have some pistachios. Cried myself. Who doesn't love pistachios? So I grabbed the pistachios, threw them at a distance because I didn't want them to, you know, get too close. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, they, you know, they're still in the tree. They're one, one chasing after the other one. And, and I kid you not. One just like stared and looked at me with his little beady black eyes. And I looked at him with my beady black eyes. And I, he told me in his own way, why did the hell did you give me pistachios? I mean, they probably wanted Brazilian nuts. I don't know, but squirrels are picky <laughs> as fuck. Picky as fuck. So don't ever have them as a pet. I mean, if they're around your house and that, don't feed them. 
they're not they're not going to like the stuff they give them i don't know i don't know maybe it wasn't gmo non-gmo i mean are people people are getting really particular about a lot of things you know so yeah. I don't know. but yeah so but it was kind of cute i mean it was cute i mean i like animals it was nice it was a nice day um but i know uh, lately you guys we've been talking about masks i mean i mean i have like a ton of them you know i just think this whole thing with mass is just, I mean, we got that one. This one's a fun one too. I mean, if you think I'm a gangbanger, this one will make me a gangbanger. I'll probably, this one, I put this one on and it makes me want to just like rob banks. I don't know. I've never had that feeling in my life, you guys, never. I've just never even had that thought. But this one makes me want to just do something, you know? <laughs> and then, and wait, there's more, there's yeah. more. I mean, you know? And then you got this little yeah. sucker, this little sucker that you put on, <laughs> you know? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I just got, but let me tell you this. Masks aren't bad, you guys, because when was the last time you actually smelled someone's bad breath? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think we should kind of keep them. Some people, it shouldn't be optional. They'll be like, you know. Yeah. And we're happy not seeing your face. It's like, you know, is that kind of mean? I don't know. People <laughs> think I have a nice face, but when I say certain things, they're like shocked. And I was like, yeah, well, you should have kept the mask on. But I, I think it's kind of good. I mean, but, but when can I really wear something like this? Because be honest with me, like, when can I ever really wear something like this? Oh, Never. a BLM uh, protest. <laughs> okay, BML. Okay, we're gonna, I'm going to add that to the list. Hold on. I'm going to write that down right here. Right, but when, when can Rona? Because of Rona. When can you do this? Never. But, but I have a thing. There's three days out of the year that if you want to wear something funky or if there's this one hat, jacket, or... <laughs> a mask a little face shield it's mm -hmm. either your birthday because your birthday you can do anything see if someone sees you with an odd thing on you're like it's your birthday i'm like it's his birthday everybody loves it new year's new year's you guys can do anything on new year's you're like it's new year's let let her wear the mask let her wear her face shield last one halloween if you want to wear something do something that's the third day out of the year that you can i'm just telling you <laughs> i've taken a poll i've come to this conclusion i've written this shit down people uh, i've written this shit down just saying mm -hmm. just saying but i like the face shield i don't know if i'll let that go you guys i don't know the whole bad breath thing kind of gets to me because i'm like whoa you know i'm like whoa whoa you can't smell it but i can and you might be able to see it i don't know but you know, we all can say that we all celebrated a birthday during COVID. Thank you, Rona. Everybody had their birthday. So you know what that means? You're granted two birthdays. So every year from this point forward, pick a second date for your second birthday because Rona, no, you get a second birthday. So pick one. I'm picking mine in August. I think August 23rd is gonna be my second birthday because of Rona. Normally it's in February sometime, like I celebrate right around there um, for my birth birthday. But I just think that, I don't know, it'll be a good thing. If you're feeling depressed, tell people it's your birthday. There you go. Yeah. Tell people it's your birthday. I really thought being pregnant was a good thing, too. I would tell people, tell people you're pregnant. And everybody's like, I don't know about that one. And I was like, well, gee, I guess so. Okay. You know. But, you know, and, and I know everybody's talking about the whole vaccination thing and this and that, passports and verification. But you know what? This is concerns me because you're going to get more information about me. It's going to start there, which fine, vaccinated, not vaccinated. You know, but then it's going to be like, you guys are going to figure out that I like my food separated. I don't like my food touching. I don't like my food touching. I know it's like ridiculous. I'm addicted to Coke. Coca-Cola people. <laughs> yeah. Coca-Cola. Okay. Get your mind out of the gut. You guys think I'm already like what, what gang banger model? No, Coca-Cola. I'm not doing any of that stuff. Yeah. But, uh, but, but one last thing I'll tell you, you know, it's so funny that, that I love reading the news and it's all little thing. And um, Jeff Bezos going to space, which I think is fantastic. I love Jeff Bezos, you know, his mm. last name, Bezos, Kisses. You know, how could you not love a man with last name but Kisses? You know, but the funny thing about it, there's two petitions out there on change.org, and I'm making this stuff up, that do not allow Jeff Bezos to return to Earth. Hold on, that's yeah. one. The other one's entitled, uh, petition to not allow Jeff Bezos re-entry to Earth. Mm. What happened, people? Why do we not like Jeff Bezos? I love him. I love him. I mean, so what that he's an evil overlord? I love the guy. Love the guy. But <laughs> uh, last thing, too, I identify as a man when the uh, line is long at the women's restroom, and I'll leave it at that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sin Delgado. <laughs> love y'all. Yeah, that's right. I'm Sin Delgado.
topics. She hit on all the great topics and whatnot. Bathroom mm-hmm. topics. She hit on Bezos issues. And she hit on Pfizer issues. And we're going to talk about all those when we get out of here. Number one. The true soldiers that I've seen in nightclubs is the girl that just walks into the guy's bathroom, like, move to the side, boys. And she'll be like, hot, too. Like, yeah, I ain't waiting in that line. And the ones just be like, man, right ahead. We'll get on out of your way. I'm sorry about this. You can have the stall. You'll do it. So, ladies, if you ever really, really got to pee and the line is long, men are so fucking weak. They think they probably get some pussy later or something. You know, it's stupid. I told you. I have driven three hours for the possibility of sex, okay? They have, um, at the Chateau, they have uh, mixed bathrooms. You can go in and, and just whatever you are. Okay, well, there. number one, in Hollywood, mixed bathrooms are meant for sex and great parties, okay? Well, it works at the airport. <laughs> They've been like that since the beginning <laughs> of time. I, when I first mm-hmm. came to LA in 2008, there was mixed bathrooms, Mm-mm-mm. okay? And there, there wasn't no mixed laws. So it was, it was, Look, okay, well, look, I'm not going to tell all my sins right now because it's not time for me to go to jail this week. So, once again, right across the center, God, oh! I got to give credit to Asian women in Los Angeles. They the true visor rockers. Them shits be like this. Them shits be like this, yo. And they be like blue and red. The old ones, visor kings, man. They kill it whatnot. So that's where you can wear them, too. So, mm-hmm. we're going to get on out of here. I'm gonna do something quick. I'm not gonna sing this song. I'm gonna just like I can put one of my songs and whatnot. Just put us a quick effort. We're gonna get on out of here, run down the comedian's name. And Ms. Wild's gonna tell us where we go. What are we looking at? 1021. Okay, so we're pretty much right on time. Good, 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 good. Um, what am I doing? I'm gonna do a, a song that I call Midnight Train to Georgia. It's a song I made mm-hmm. about LA. Cause you know, when you move to LA and you're a musician, you're like, I gotta make me an LA song. I make an LA song, you know what I'm saying? I want like 16 year old girls to take their tops off and drop and like drop tops to me, right? In the Corvette. But I'm not gonna be there because I don't want to walk to. I'm just saying, that's what they gonna do. They listen to my shit. <laughs> so, anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> it's the midnight train to Georgia. We in LA, California. Just ride to the beat, ride, ride to the beat, ride to the beat, ride, ride to the beat. I pull up on the broad light. Hey, babe, yo, Jill, red light. I see where you gotta go. Take it to my home, make it, make your body blow. You're looking real good, man. Red bottoms looking real hood, man. Let me treat you like a star. Break you all night and I'm going to be strict bra. Let me tell you, baby, boo. Go me do the shit I would do. Let me turn, turn it up. Turn it, turn it up. Turn it, turn it, turn it up. It's a late man. Tell you how you go to the place, man. And let me take you to my house. Break it down your body, then I take it down south. I've been that chain to Georgia. We in LA, California. Just ride to the beat, ride, ride to the beat, ride to the beat, ride, ride to the beat. And that's the Dial Bar Comedy Show. When I run across all the comedians that came to the stage or whatnot, like Bella Rose, we had Cosa Sendel Dado. And then we had the tag team, the power to Bob Nissen and Joy Chanchado. A woman so powerful, she made a therapist getting paid say, shut the fuck up. That's comedy right there. God mm-hmm. damn. And also, it was Mocha Casey McNeil and Carol kicking it down and Wild Joe tell us where we got to go. All right, you guys, that was super fun. And you can watch us every Tuesday night live streaming at 9 p.m. We might have to change up some of the times because we're going to be out in the bars on Tuesday nights. So it might be a little earlier or later for those live shows. We'll figure it out. But uh, yes, definitely tune in on Tuesdays and then check out the replay. We have all our shows. I think we're like up to a big number of shows. We've done a lot of shows, like some 150, 250, a lot of shows. And um, they are all up on divebarcomedy.com or wherever you listen or watch podcasts. So on your Apple, on your Android, the podcast uh, player, you just search Dive Bar Comedy and you can find all of our shows, past, present, and future. So thank you guys all for watching. 
and uh, wish me luck. Tomorrow I have surgery. Oh, Pray that I don't get Kenny Lyons blood. Oh yeah, good luck tomorrow. Oh. Thank You're you. You're not gonna get a blood transfusion. You'll be fine. I think I'm fine. I think yeah. I'm fine. But uh, anyway, you guys, we'll <laughs> see you next week, and then we will be out in July. And also, you guys, don't forget to go to Pandemic, the yes. drive-in movie of Carol's oh, yeah. on June 26th. Yep. And then my Saturday. birthday is June 27th. So it's an exciting. Exciting week. So, mm -hmm. all right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being on the show. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Your surgery. Right. Bye, Facebook. Thank you.